Senator Brasso. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And today our committee is uh, considering the nomination of Representative Deb Holland to uh, serve as the Secretary of Interior. Uh, and first, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to join you in welcoming the four new members of the committee, and I'm looking forward to their uh, active participation in all our deliberations. Uh, well, since 2019, Congresswoman Holland has represented New Mexico's first congressional district, which includes most of Albuquerque and uh, several surrounding pueblos and suburbs. If confirmed, she would be the first Native American cabinet secretary. For that reason, her nomination is historic and deserves to be recognized. At the same time, I am troubled uh, by many of Representative Holland's views, views that many in my home state of Wyoming would consider as radical. The Secretary of Interior is a critically important job to my home state of Wyoming and to the entire West. If confirmed as Secretary of Interior, Representative Holland would lead an agency with more than 70,000 employees. These employees manage 20% of the nation's lands, including our national parks, our national monuments, our wildlife refuges, our multiple use lands, and, uh, other, and the entire outer continental shelf. Uh, they, also serve as manage, uh, they also serve as managers of the largest water supply in the West. The Secretary's responsibility includes upholding our nation's trust responsibilities to 574 federally recognized American Indian tribes and Alaska Natives. The Secretary also has important responsibilities related to the U.S. territories and the freely associated states. One of the Secretary's most critical functions is to oversee the development of traditional and renewable energy supplies on public lands and waters. In Wyoming, we're proud to be America's leading producer of coal, uranium, trona, bentonite. Wyoming ranks number one in federal production of natural gas and number two in the federal oil production. Almost 50% of Wyoming's surface area and 69% of Wyoming's minerals are owned by the federal government. The collective size of the surface area owned by the federal government in Wyoming is, Mr. Chairman, larger than the entire state of West Virginia. Yeah. That was, that was for informational. We'll get Alaska here, we'll get Alaska here in a moment, but go ahead. I'm, I'm in trouble right now. Energy production on public land creates good paying jobs. It provides tremendous revenue for our state. In Wyoming, energy and mineral activity uh, on Department of Interior land had a $17.3 billion economic impact for fiscal year 2019 and supported over 57,000 jobs. For years, the state of Wyoming has collected over a billion dollars annually in royalties and taxes from oil, gas, and coal produced on federal lands within our, within our borders. And Wyoming isn't the only state that benefits from energy production on public lands. In Representative Holland's home state of New Mexico, energy and mineral activity on Department of Interior lands contributed $21 billion in fiscal year 2019. New Mexico's collected on an annual basis over a billion dollars in royalties and taxes from oil and gas produced on federal lands within its border. We shouldn't undermine America's energy production and we should not hurt our own economy. Yet that's precisely what the Biden administration is doing. By signing an executive order to ban all new oil, coal, gas leases on federal lands, the president is taking a sledgehammer to Western states economies. A ban on federal leasing could result in 33,000 workers losing their jobs in Wyoming. In Representative Holland's home state of Wyoming, 62,000 workers stand to lose their jobs. Our states will also lose hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue that is used for essential services, including hundreds of millions of dollars in funding of K-12 public education. The Biden administration's moratorium robs our children of their vital education funding, and the Senate agrees. On February 4th, the Senate voted 98 to 2 for my amendment in an effort to restore the hundreds of millions of education dollars that will be lost to Biden administration policies. In his first month in office, President Biden has declared war on American energy. He's crushed jobs and threatened vital education funds for our children. Representative Holland's past statements show that she agrees with this strategy. In May of 2019, Representative Holland said unequivocally in an interview, with uh, the Guardian newspaper, she says, quote, I am wholeheartedly against fracking and drilling on public lands. On her campaign website, Representative Holland said we need to, quote, keep fossil fuels in the ground, and then went on to say, I pledge to vote against all new fossil fuel infrastructure, close quote. Representative Holland's positions are squarely at odds with the mission of the Department of Interior. 
That mission includes managing our nation's oil, gas, and coal resources in a responsible manner, not eliminating access to them. Now, I'm willing to work with Representative Holland and the Biden administration to conserve our national parks and our monuments, to uphold our nation's trust responsibilities, and to protect multiple use of our public lands. But if Representative Holland intends to use the Department of Interior to crush the economy of Wyoming, and other Western states, then I'm going to oppose the nomination. Today's hearings gives us an opportunity to hear directly from Congresswoman Holland and to get more clarity regarding her views and vision for the Department of Interior. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to uh, her testimony.